And I think in the interest of time, we will move on uh, to Dr. Bishkovsky's uh, talk. Uh, she will give us an update on medications for risk reduction. So uh, welcome, Dr. Bishkovsky. So I'm very excited to be here today and talk about medication for breast cancer risk reduction. The medications that I will discuss are known as chemo prevention, but from a pharmacologic standpoint, they are endocrine therapies, not chemotherapies. So as we have already discussed today, there's a lot of mess messaging to navigate here on what to do and what not to do in order to reduce one's risk of breast cancer and promote early detection. So nuance is needed when considering these breast cancer risk factors. As part of that messaging, we must also consider medications like tamoxifen and aromatase inhibitors for breast cancer prevention. Breast cancer prevention medications are good options, especially if someone is identified as high risk for breast cancer. Endocrine therapy has various roles and context matters. Women who are high risk for breast cancer based on personal, familiar, genetic factors or high risk because of a diagnosis of a high risk lesion, they can consider medication for breast cancer prevention. We also use these medications for breast cancer prevention in those with a personal diagnosis of ductal carcinoma in situ. These are the same medications that we use for those with breast cancer, but the objectives are different. So our options for risk-reducing therapies depend on a woman's menopausal status. Premenopausal women are eligible for tamoxifen dosed at 20 milligrams or five milligrams, Postmenopausal women are eligible to take tamoxifen, raloxifene, anastrozole, or extamestane. So tamoxifen was first approved for breast cancer prevention in 1999. This was based on data from three important clinical trials, the NSABP P1 study, the Royal Marsdell, and the IBIS-1 study. The NSABP P1 study was led by a collaborative surgical group in the United States, and this was one of the largest studies and well designed to date. So it's an important study because they compared tamoxifen to placebo. The other medications um, kind of came later. All of these medications have side effects. The one side effect that stands out most um, for women is the fact that they cause hot flashes. As a provider, the most concerning side effects with tamoxifen and raloxifene are that they can cause blood clots both in the legs and in the lungs. Blood clots in the legs are known as deep vein thromboses and blood clots in the lungs are known as pulmonary embolisms. Tamoxifen and raloxifene are not only good options for patients, so they're not good options for patients with a personal history of blood clots, family history of blood clots, or who have impaired ambulation. For example, someone who's using a cane, a walker, or a wheelchair. Tamoxifen also has a small increased risk of uterine cancer. So the risk of the uterine cancer in the blood clots is less than 1% for a five-year course. So I now want to discuss the NSABP P1 study. So this was the landmark study as it was the first breast cancer prevention trial conducted in the United States. It was a randomized trial that enrolled approximately 16,000 women who were selected to take tamoxifen 20 milligrams for five years or placebo for five years. The study period was from 1992 to 1996. Women were eligible for the study if they were 60 years or older, or if they were between the ages of 35 and 59 with a high risk of breast cancer. Women needed to be healthy without evidence of breast cancer and not pregnant or planning to become pregnant to participate in the study. They could also not be on hormone replacement therapy. In the P1 trial after Five years of follow-up, tamoxifen was shown to reduce the risk of both invasive and non-invasive breast cancer by approximately 43%, and this was statistically significant. So you can see this in the figure here, where those that took placebo, which is represented by the white squares, they had a higher incidence of invasive breast cancer with 250 events at approximately the seven year mark in comparison to those that took tamoxifen, which is the black circles and the number of events um, in the tamoxifen arm was 145. 
there was a second tamoxifen versus placebo study, and this is known as IBIS-1. So this study confirmed the results that we saw in P1 that breast cancer reduction with tamoxifen occurs not only during the five years of therapy, but also after therapy had stopped. And in IBIS-1, they followed patients for 20 years, and they found that tamoxifen for a five-year course reduce the risk of breast cancer for a total of 20 years. So there's this like long lasting effect with these medications, which is really, I think, you know, a great benefit. So the benefit is primarily reducing estrogen receptor positive breast cancer, which is the most common cause of breast cancer that we see. 80 to 85% of breast cancer diagnoses are estrogen receptor positive. Following the tamoxifen trials, um, there were subsequent studies that looked at raloxifene, extamestane, and anastrozole for breast cancer prevention, and all of these agents were also found to be efficacious. The aromatase inhibitors, as I said before, like anastrozole and extamestane, can only be used in postmenopausal women. In regards to the serious side effects, the blood clot risk with tamoxifen is low. It's approximately a 0.5% risk for a five-year course. The endometrial cancer risk is low too, and that's a 0.4% risk. The endometrial cancer risk does not extend after therapy has stopped. So it's only when patients are on therapy. And this is with the 20 milligram dose of tamoxifen. So we believe that low dose tamoxifen, a five milligram dose even has lower risks than what I'm presenting today. With the aromatase inhibitors, there's no increased risk of blood clots. There's also no ri increased risk of endometrial cancer, but these medications cause more joint aches and pains, and they also cause bone loss. So they're not always the best medications um, for, for some patients. So when I talk in the clinic to patients about these options, the biggest barrier and worry is about the hot flashes. We all have negative images of hot flashes. Hot flashes can be daily and they can be debilitating. They are also associated with aging and undesirability. However, many patients feel well on these medications for breast cancer prevention. I now wanna transition and talk a little bit about low dose tamoxifen and clinical trial options. So at the 2019 San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, data on tamoxifen 5 milligrams for three years was shown to have efficacy at preventing breast cancer and had a favorable side effect profile. In 2022 at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, the data continued to look good from the TAM-01 study at 10 years of follow-up. So based on these data, we introduced tamoxifen low dose, five milligrams to our high-risk patients in genetics and bee prep in December, 2019, and to patients with DCIS in January, 2023. So the low dose tamoxifen study was conducted in Italy, and this study looked at five milligrams of tamoxifen compared to 20 milligrams, which was the standard. Um, this study was conducted by Andre Desenzi. So the idea was that five milligrams would be more tolerable, and then also um, they wanted to study a shorter duration, a three-year course as opposed to a five-year course. The findings were really practice-changing. The study showed that low-dose tamoxifen for three years reduced the incidence of breast cancer by 42% at 10 years. This is a big result, and it was practice-changing for um, our clinics. Compared to placebo, women with tamoxifen had more frequent hot flashes. You can see this in figure A. When they compared um, tamoxifen 5 milligrams and placebo um, in regards to hot flash intensity, there was not a significant difference in hot flash intensity. This is in figure B. There was also no difference in vaginal dryness and pain or musculoskeletal pain between tamoxifen 5 milligrams and placebo. However, as you can see in figure C, for vaginal dryness, that increased a little bit with time through the course of the study. Musculoskeletal pain and arthralgias also increased with time in the course of the study. You can see this in C and D. And both of these things um, represent normal aging. So women do develop more vaginal dryness and get more achy with age. 
So when looking at the subsets um, of the low-dose tamoxifen trial, patients who were postmenopausal seem to benefit more than premenopausal women with the five milligram dose. So we really kind of ask women who are premenopausal to consider trying to work up to that 20 milligram dose. But for postmenopausal women, we really um, are comfortable with that five milligram dose for a three year course. So just a reminder, endocrine therapy prevents estrogen receptor positive breast cancer. In the general population, most breast cancers are estrogen receptor positive. For those with a breast cancer risk gene, we can, sir, can consider the observed breast cancer subtypes associated with the gene to inform discussions around tamoxifen for prevention. And these discussions must be personalized. There are data that tamoxifen or raloxifene modulate breast cancer risk in BRCA carriers, but we do not have data evaluating the benefit of um, risk reduction in BRCA1 patients versus BRCA2 patients. Um, in the retrospective study that has been published on this topic, um, they did the analyses including both BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutation carriers together. In regards to um, mammogram density, there is data that low-dose tamoxifen will decrease breast density. So this is a benefit in high-risk women since um, by lowering the breast density, it aids in early detection. So in our B-PREP clinic, we have found that approximately 20% of patients with high-risk lesions like ADH, ALH, and lobular carcinoma in site 2 will start chemo prevention, and our uptake numbers are even higher now that we have low-dose tamoxifen as an option. For premenopausal women, I recommend starting at the five milligram dose of tamoxifen, taking it for two weeks, then trying to go up to 10 milligrams for two weeks, and then working our way up to a 20 milligram dose. Um, you know, some women who try that, they have side effects, and then we discuss um, those side effects and whether it's worthwhile to, to work up to the 20 milligram dose. I want to briefly discuss two trials that are now accruing. The first is a REP-D study. So this is the study that Nancy Campbell discussed earlier. One is eligible for the study if you have dense breasts and are age 18 to 59 and are not exercising more than 90 minutes a week. To participate, part patients agree to start a 12-week exercise program, and you would work with Nancy, and you also um, agree to a baseline and end of exercise study biopsy. The second study that is enrolling is called Crescent. It is led by Carol Fabian at the University of Kansas. The goal of this work is to determine if Duave, which is a combination of estrogen plus basidoxaphene, basidoxaphene is similar to tamoxifen, um, the idea is to look whether Duave can work as a breast cancer prevention medication. Currently, Duave is FDA approved as hormone replacement therapy. And Duave is one of the HRT medications that Dr. Deborah Kolek presented earlier this morning. So the primary endpoint in the study is to look at mammogram fibroglandular volume, but secondary endpoints are to look at you know, changes in the breast tissue and other biomarkers. So we know that women who are high risk for breast cancer and already have menopausal symptoms, they're unlikely to take a risk reducing medication and also unlikely to even try tamoxifen. And we know that basidoxaphene and conjugated estrogen um, you know, are, is a combination that may be really tolerable in this patient population because it's approved for menopause. And it's also an interesting combination that may influence breast cancer risk, which is why the study is open and we want to investigate um, this medication combination. So this study includes high-risk women who do not have a BRCA mutation and are between the ages of 45 and 64 who have vasomotor symptoms. So patients need to have either hot flashes or night sweats to participate in this study. So in conclusions, me medications can prevent breast cancer in both pre- and postmenopausal women who are high risk for breast cancer. 
Tamoxifen lowers the risk of breast cancer while on therapy and also 15 years after therapy has stopped. Low dose tamoxifen may be more tolerable than the 20 milligram dose and low dose tamoxifen can decrease breast density on mammogram. And it's a great dose for women who are postmenopausal. Also, the field is really evolving, and I hope that with our clinical trial work, we'll have more options in this setting in the future. Thank you all for your attention. Thank you, Brittany. Uh, very nice overview, and thank you for um, plugging the clinical trials again. Uh, we want to get that word out there and, and hopefully identify people to participate.